Chapter 23 Homecoming Twilight took a swig of water from one of her stone bottles, quenching her thirst as well as she was able. She may have been out of the Badlands now, but the environment was still hot and dry, threatening her with dehydration if she didn't drink regularly. The hot summer sun bearing down on her didn't help matters, sapping her already waning strength and matting down her fur with a thick layer of sweat to replace the rainwater. It had been about a day since she and Thorax had parted ways. Despite stopping for a rest after the sun had set, her muscles burned with exhaustion, threatening to give out at her at any time. She dragged her hooves through the dry, yellow grass, struggling to lift her eyes from the ground. She managed to look up at the sun every so often and make sure she was going in the right direction, straight north. While the serrated nature of the Badlands had been a nightmare to navigate, at the very least, there had been clearly distinguishable landmarks there to help guide her. In the savanna south of Dodge Junction, it was basically just grass and the occasional acacia tree. Not that she was complaining about that, though. It meant she finally had a bountiful supply of food to keep her strength up. But with no landmarks, her only guide was the sun. If she veered too far off track, it was quite likely she'd march right past Dodge Junction without even seeing it. She gave off a quiet snort at the idea. <laughs> oh, that'd just be wonderful, she thought to herself. I come all this way and I overshoot my target. Rainbow and Spike would never let me live it down. She crested a hill and came to a stop to catch her breath. There was a lone tree jutting up from it, providing her a degree of shelter from the harsh glare of the sun. She took another swig of water, emptying that particular bottle, and cast it aside. She gave off a weary sigh and stared ahead at the grasslands before her. Just grass and trees as far as the eye could see. It'll probably be another day before I spot anything familiar, she thought with a disgruntled snort. If I start listing off to one side when traveling, I need to make sure it's to the west. That way I can stumble onto the railroad and follow it east to the junction. Then I can hitch a ride home and this will all be over. As she sat there, contemplating her plan of action and going over just what she would tell her friends when she met back up with them. Something on the horizon caught her eye. Curious, Twilight leaned forward and squinted. Something was moving through the sky. It was fast, incredibly so, and it looked oddly familiar. But she just couldn't put her hoof on what it was. Until it darted hard to the left leaving a rainbow-colored trail in its wake. Her eyes flew wide open, a gasp tearing past her lips. Rainbow Dash! She exclaimed, forcing herself to her hooves. She stumbled forward, but her exhausted legs saw fit to give out, sending her falling back to the ground in a heap. She grunted and swore under her breath while looking at the distant prisms again. I need to let her know I'm here! Groaning with effort, Twali called upon the last dregs of her magic. Her horn lit up with an arcane glow, a small sphere gathering on the tip. Then, with a cry, she fired the bolt off into the sky. It scurved up and up, a tiny red spark against the blue heavens, and then faded entirely from view. A few seconds later, her flare exploded out with a muffled pop. Almost immediately, the distant rainbow blur stopped moving. There was a beat of nothing before it appeared again. And it only took Twilight a moment to realize it was headed directly for her, very quickly. Her heart sang with joy, and she forced herself up to her haunches. Her lips split into an eager grin, and she waved her forelegs frantically in the air. <laughs> rainbow Dash! She called out, throwing her voice as far as possible. The Pegasus drew closer, pivoting for her directly. Twilight's grin widened as details began to come into focus. Feathery wings, piercing dark pink eyes, 
cyan fur, and a distinctly colorful mane and tail. Twilight! Rainbow shouted, her voice echoing into her ears even from this far away. Twilight blinked. Rainbow wasn't slowing down. Oh no. Rainbow slammed into Twilight with enough force to knock the air from the unicorn's lungs. She gasped as she was thrown onto her back, the colorful Pegasus clinging onto her so tightly she could barely breathe. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh! You're all right! Rainbow stammered out in relief. She pulled back and glared angrily at Twilight. What the hey, Twilight? We were all worried sick about you! Why didn't you write back? Twilight sucked in a few lungfuls of sweet, life-giving air before smiling sheepishly at Rainbow. <sighs> Good to see you too, she said weakly. Rainbow's anger quickly melted away, replaced entirely with relief. She managed a weak smile before hauling Twilight to her hooves. Sorry, <clears throat> that wasn't cool of me. It's okay. Twilight dismissed the apology, leaning against Rainbow's side to keep herself standing. It's kind of a long story. <sighs> Where are the others? As if on cue, the voice of a certain dragon pierced through the air. Twilight! Twilight looked up, and there was Spike, running well ahead of the others. They were all there. Rarity, Fluttershy, Applejack, and Pinkie Pie. Each and every one of them smiling with relief at seeing their friend safe and sound. Spike ran into Twilight's waiting hooves, knocking her back to her haunches as he buried his face into her chest fur. <laughs> oh my gosh, Twilight, I was so worried about you! He babbled, starting to cry tears of joy into her coat. We heard you were dead, and I sent you that letter and you never wrote back, and... and... I'm sorry. Twilight apologized, wrapping him up in an affectionate hug. I'm so sorry I scared you, Spike. I didn't mean to, I swear. Oh my goodness, you were so skinny! Fluttershy exclaimed, her eyes affixed to Twilight's visible ribs as every pony else huddled around her and Spike in a large group hug. Have you been eating at all? Where I can. Twilight replied weakly. She opened her mouth to speak, but the words caught in her throat, silenced by a very large and unattractive yawn. Applejack chuckled. <laughs> Looks like y'all could do with some sleep there, Sugar Cube, she said, patting Twilight on the back. And a bath, Rarity added. All of that dirt and sand and... She leaned in closer, balking at the remnants of Twilight's injuries. Is that dried blood? Girls, really, I'm okay. Twilight tried to assure them. I'm just tired, and I really want to go home. Pinky hummed happily, nuzzling into Twilight's mane. Mm, I'll make you a super duper extra special welcome home cake when we get back, she promised. And then, when you're feeling up to it, an even more super duper extra special welcome home party to celebrate. Twilight laughed, hauling herself back to a standing position with Rainbow's help. With the last of her magic, she deposited Spike on her back. <laughs> that sounds good, Pinkie Pie. But right now, let's just go home. There were no disagreements to be had with that plan, and without missing a beat, they set off for the north, heading for Dodge Junction. As they went, Twilight was assaulted on all sides by questions. Rainbow wanted to know how she had gotten hurt and survived, no doubt hoping for some awesome story about an epic battle with a horrific monster, while Fluttershy was more concerned about looking after her health, though she did ask about the local wildlife from time to time as well. Twilight told them what she could, but she never once mentioned Thorax. She made sure to keep her promise to him and kept his existence and the existence of his people a complete and total secret from her friends. It didn't feel right to lie to them about it, especially to Applejack. 
but she wasn't going to go back on her word to Thorax's last request. Every time she had to omit him, however, the same thought crossed her mind. I hope he'll be okay. The stone wall in front of Thorax split open with a spine-tingling scrape, revealing the throne room of Queen Chrysalis on the other side. Elite changeling guards lined the walls, staring down at him with raised eyebrows and disdain. He did his best not to react to them, however. He held his head high and focused on the scene in front of him. Two green cocoons rested at the base of Chrysalis's throne, where Pharynx and an elite guard stood over them with scorn and resentment. Chrysalis reclined in her throne, looking down on them with boredom and disgust. She glanced past them at Thorax as he entered, and her lips peeled back into a fang-filled grin. Oh, Thorax, you've returned, she called out to him. All eyes that hadn't noticed him up until now focused on him. Pharynx locked gazes with him, and the relief in the Elder Drone's purple eyes was clearly visible to Thorax, even if invisible to all others. Thorax flashed him a small smile before stepping forward and dipping into a low, low bow. Yes, your highness. I came back as quickly as I could once my injuries were healed enough for me to move. The royal guards in the room glanced amongst themselves with surprise, but did not speak. Chrysalis's grin grew. Is that so? Yet again, Thorax, I am impressed by you. Not for your cunning this time, but by your raw resilience. To survive the wounds these two disgraces inflicted upon you, as well as the fury of the Tatsa worms in such an intense rainstorm, she said, rising from her throne and jumping down. Her hooves slammed into the stone between the squirming cocoons, eliciting terrified squeaks from their occupants. She strode towards Thorax, an almost mothering look on her face. As infuriating as your passivity is, you are clearly far more capable than we have all been giving you credit for. You are cut from a different cloth than the rest of my drones. Thorax kept his head down. Thank you, my queen, he said nervously, remembering all too clearly the last time she had drawn this close to him. She chuckled quietly under her breath and placed her hoof on the back of his head. You truly are a fascinating one, aren't you? I have clearly been far too harsh on you thus far, she said, spinning on her hooves. I cannot, however, say the same of these two. Thorax cringed, a chill running down his spine at the venom in the queen's words. He heard Scorpion and Mandible's desperate cries, muffled by the resin covering their mouths as Chrysalis drew near. These two grubs took it upon themselves to defy my will and try and execute you when I had already passed my judgment. Their actions can only be described as treason, and there can be no place for traitors in my hive. The thrum of her magic filled the air. Thorax screwed his eyes shut, shuddering fearfully as Scorpion and Mandible screamed in agony through their gags. He could hear their cocoons peeling away, and he could sense the love being forcefully torn out of their bodies. His heart twisted in his chest as the familiar crunch of contracting chitin filled his ears. Finally, it ended and two whimpering bodies were dropped back to the floor with hollow thumps. Chrysalis turned back to Thorax, holding her head high. Rise, Thorax. He did as instructed without hesitation, standing up before his queen and staring directly ahead. She marched up to stand over him, looking down with a stern frown. 
You were wrong to buy these two, and I aim to ensure it never happens again. They tried to kill you when I spared you. But it must never be forgotten why they tried to end you. You did steal from the hive, Thorax, and that crime is unacceptable. I trust you understand this. Thorax nodded. Yes, my queen. I understand. Chrysalis hummed before her horn lit up. Very well. Never forget it. She commanded before pink light flowed from her horn and into his chest. Thorax's eyes widened as he felt an influx of love, taken from scorpion and mandible, pouring into his being. Within moments, he was fully restored to where he had been before he had been caught stealing. Chrysalis cut the flow and stepped back. As recompense for their attempt on your life, I have restored your former strength. However, all of your other punishments shall remain in effect until I declare otherwise. Your rations are to remain halved, and you are still not to leave the hive alone. Do I make myself clear? He bowed his head. Yes, my queen, perfectly. Good. Chrysalis purred. She turned back to Scorpion and Mandible, her horn glowing once more. Now, to dispose of these scoundrels! Thorax's heart skipped a beat in his chest. He lifted his head, taking a step forward before he could stop himself. Wait! He called out, unable to prevent it. The entire room fell silent, all eyes staring at him in disbelief. Pharynx's wings wavered on his back, his eyes darting between Chrysalis and Thorax in disbelief and rapidly mounting dread. Slowly, Chrysalis turned back to Thorax with an impatient glare on her face. Wait, she echoed quietly. Is there something else you wish to say, Thorax? Thorax swallowed heavily, nodding towards Mandible and Scorpion. I... If I may, your highness, I... I humbly request that you spare them too. He managed to stammer out, lowering his head respectfully. And why would I do that? Chrysalis asked. Why would you even want that? They tried to kill you, defying my judgment in the process. They committed treason. They are to be executed. I know, but... If they died, then they could never make up for their mistakes. Thorax tried, scuffing his hoof along the ground. And, for as stupid and arrogant as they are, they are good at their jobs. And besides... He risked a look up into Chrysalis's eyes, though he made sure to keep himself low and submissive. You spared me, didn't you? Chrysalis eyed him critically for several moments, before turning back to Scorpion and Mandible. Very well. But if they step out of line one more time, their lives will be forfeit. I will hear no objections. Thorax bowed again. Of course not. Thank you, your majesty. She hummed before turning back to Pharynx. You are no longer needed here, Pharynx. Take your brother for a medical examination. I will not have such a promising drone go without proper care. Pharynx threw a sharp salute. At once, your highness. He replied before turning and marching over for his brother. Chrysalis glanced at Thorax over her shoulder. Get well soon, Thorax. I have a feeling I will have need of your skills in the days to come. Thorax nodded and bowed one last time, before allowing himself to be escorted out of the throne room by Pharynx. The moment the wall closed behind them, Pharynx clapped him behind the ear. You moron! He snarled. Ow! Thorax protested, rubbing at his head. Act! What was that for? For darn near squandering any goodwill you had garnered with the queen! Pharynx shot back. 
He sighed and shook his head. <sighs> Asking for those two nimrods to be spared. You really are too gentle for your own good, aren't you? Thorax smiled at him. Would you rather it be any other way? Pharynx didn't answer. He simply grabbed Thorax by the hoof and tugged him along for the healing chambers. Thorax followed without protest, managing a tiny laugh. It wasn't until they were halfway there, alone in an empty corridor, that Pharynx stopped and turned back to him. So, she's gone? He asked in a low whisper. Thorax hesitated, his ears drooping at the reminder of Twilight. Yeah. Yeah, she's gone. Good, Pharynx replied, allowing Thorax a brief glimpse of a small smile. That's one less thing to put you in danger. Thorax rolled his eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love you too. Keep talking, tough guy. Pharynx snarked, yanking him along again. <laughs> See how long my patience lasts. Once again, Thorax laughed. A few seconds later, Pharynx looked around to ensure they were alone, and then he laughed too. <laughs>